Hey family, you're watching Discovering Happiness with your host Manny V, where we bring reality to life, where we dissect it, analyze it, and try to find happiness within. So with no further ado, let's get started. COVID-19 definitely affected a lot of relationships, physically, mentally, and emotionally, which led to a lot of misunderstanding and chaotic behavior between siblings, co-workers, spouses, and loved ones. And I'm sure each one of us had to face our own challenges and frustration during this rocky time. But I'm going to dive deep in a topic that we are mostly interested in, which is marriage disruption during this podcast. I'm going to talk about some of the sabotaging that occurred during this time between breakups and marriages. Some reasons of the sabotization or breakups were friends and family, in-laws, negativity influencing during this rocky times. A lot of unrealistic expectations cause a toll in a lot of relationships during this time. Social media as far as comparing your life with others kind of took a toll in a lot of relationships. Ego clashing and not giving enough space to each other also caused a lot of friction between the relationship which slipped to the cracks in many ways. As far as the divorce rate in India during COVID, it actually rose 30% during this time. Some of the reasons were psychologically incompatibility between the spouses, unrealistic expectations, financial insecurity, in-laws interference, and Spouses just taking matters to their own hands and making erotic decisions, which led to a lot of chaos and misunderstandings. Today's breakup, divorce, and separation usually end in two words, usually other by our spouses or partner. The word, I'm done, it's over. How do we get there? What causes us to use those two words? Well, in the society we live in today, we're very prone to not tolerate pretty much any type of conflict or BS. Usually when things get rough, you want to be MIA or turn the other cheek. It can definitely cause a lot of toll and friction in a lot of relationships. During using the word it's done or it's over, we're actually drawing conclusion too quick too fast. We are not willing to go the extra mile to resolve some of our issues, whether it's insecurity or friction we're having with our own self. It's usually the mindset of my way or the highway. Not thinking logically, but more on an emotional level. Also, the mindset of Thinking the grass might be greener the other side when shit gets hard and rough. Well, when we use the word it's over, it's done, there are repercussions behind those. It actually makes us more weaker mentally. When real life problems occur, we're more prone to run away from conflict, issues, and just be MIA. And this can happen at the workplace, at home, or in the outdoors. It also makes us less patience, which can affect our future when meeting new potential people. Could also make us feel that perfection is the key to an ideal life, which could lead to a lot of disappointments during our journey of life. What's my take on marriage as a relationship? Kind of like that model to debt do as a part approach. Of course, there's gonna be ups and downs, frictions, conflict during a relationship. You can't expect for any type of perfection. You just have to learn to meet in between, find a common ground, compromise a bit, and negotiate. I believe a marriage or relationship is actually 
setting us up for a stronger foundation, preparing us for bigger conflicts, whether it's with our own children, our co-workers, family members, or relatives. Just learning those skills that will help us, whether it's negotiating, compromising, and being that team player. However, when friction do occur during a relationship or frustration, you definitely want to set time apart from each other. Helps grow yourself with self-esteem and much more. During those differences, you definitely want to bring some self-love, self-development. It just helps you remove a lot of insecurity and anxiety between the relationships. During those times after you come out of it, it just makes the relationship more stronger and stable. During the COVID, I would say a lot of celebrities, Hollywood, Bollywood, a lot of breakups, divorce, separation did occur. Now, these celebrities do have it all, beauty, fame, and wealth. However, they do lack a few things, which is a strong foundation, a stable bondship, and learning to separate yourself from work and home, which caused a lot of friction between the relationship, a lot of ego clashing, and much more. So we're gonna dive deep and talk more about how to resolve those issues. So what's leading to a lot of breakups and divorce in today's world? I will say a few factors behind it. One would be lack of goals, achievements, pretty much trying to better yourself, find happiness within. The other factor is insecurity, looking at other people's lives and just comparing it, whether it's on Facebook, social media, or Instagram. It's basically comparing why your life is not like your friend's life. And that can lead to a lot of jealousy, insecurity, and vulnerability. Other factor is lack of self-love, depending on someone's approval to feel love. That can also cause a lot of friction and vulnerability in your relationship, which can lead to a lot of cracks. Women, I definitely want to feel your comments. I want to hear you guys out. And why do you think or what you think is leading to today's breakup and divorce? I think that will help a lot of people out there figure out why things are going in the way they are. I want to bring out some suggestions on how to ease some of the conflicts when it comes to marriages and relationship. I would definitely say that you want to take everyone's advice with a grain of salt. And when it comes to friction and conflict, you can also take a long walk by yourself for an hour just to clear your mind so when the next time a friction or argument do occur, you won't be so prone to use those words such as I'm done, it's over, etc. I would also say start with meditation. Slow down your breath. It will definitely relieve a lot of stress and anxiety within. Other suggestion would be to write a letter to each other. Kind of like the sandwich method. Some positivity of what you like about your spouse. Also, you can also write down some changes on how you can help each other grow throughout the relationship. And some realistic changes you would like to see from your partner. Other suggestion will be a couple's retreat. That will definitely help you understand some of the conflicts other couples are dealing with, understand how to deal with those, find a common ground, and much more. It would also help you bring that relationship and that bondship back to the way it was when you met. So those are some of the suggestions I would encourage you guys to try out during your relationship, during your marriage, and much more. Find a common ground, work to the small uh, baby steps, and see where it takes you. Just don't take everything to the heart or everything too serious. Because life is about enjoying each other's company for the long run. So just learn to find happiness within, find a common ground, and make it fun. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till then, have a beautiful day. Om Shanti.